Good afternoon. We welcome St. Francis of Assisi, American National Catholic Church. Hi, Gregory. Today, we celebrate the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. And our song for gathering is number 671, Glory and Praise to Our God. Let us all stand and read our song, right, Bishop. We see and join together and to sing number 671. Glory and praise to our God, who our Lord gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His ways. We, the daughters and sons of Him, who build the valley and plains, praise the wonders of our God. Oh my God. 
the light has shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you and with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Gideon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of the kingdom and cured 
every disease among the people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulon and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulon, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in the dark and darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to, began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon who is called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. I want to apologize in advance. I didn't turn my phone off, and so when I get a text or a, uh, a Facebook or something, it whistles. But it whistles in kind of a jaunty way. And so this morning I was at the hospital and it whistled, and the uh, nurse thought I was whistling at her. It was, I was not. So I just want you to know if you hear it. I that just heard it story. before. Yeah. That's my story out that I'm sticking to. And <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but, but just in advance, if you hear it, that's what it is, right? So well, welcome to all of you. Welcome on this, uh, on this, uh, on this cold midwinter uh, uh, afternoon, right? Hopefully, uh, hopefully, I think we're in for some uh, a little bit warmer warmer temperatures tomorrow, right? Maybe the ice the, will melt a little bit. But in any case, uh, it's, uh, it's, I guess it's uh, winter in New Jersey. So here we are, right? So I, I'm really happy to see so many of you. These readings that we have today, I was, uh, I was uh, thinking a lot about them. We hear this uh, one from Isaiah on the second Sunday of Christmas. We hear this idea that Isaiah, uh, for us, you and I, we see the fulfillment of this prophecy of a light that has come into the world and to uh, relieve uh, and to move us from uh, oppression to liberation in the person of Jesus Christ. And so we hear it again today. This idea that, that, uh, that, that uh, in surprising places, uh, God does wonderful things. In, in the Gospels, we usually hear this message in the Gospel of Luke. Luke's uh, theological frame is the great reversal. You know, uh, we hear the Magnificat, how, how uh, God's, uh, uh, those who are humble will be raised up, right? And, and those who are proud will be, will be down. So, but Matthew uses a little bit, but I was thinking this morning about this middle term, this, this uh, letter that Paul writes uh, to the Christians. There was a little bit of controversy in Corinth. People were choosing sides. Just when you think there were no troubles in the early church, all you have to do is start to read some of the letters, right? And so, so this idea was that uh, people were choosing sides. I'm for Paul, I'm for Apollo, I'm for... So Paul reminds them, I didn't come to baptize in my name. I came to do what I was asked to do, which was to preach the kingdom of God in your midst. But he says something very interesting. Remember that Paul was a rabbi. Paul's name was Saul. And he was studied under uh, Gamaliel, who was probably one of the most famous of the rabbis. 
So he gets this sense for you and I of the cross as the center of our life. He gets this sense when he says, for those who don't understand, it is folly. But for those, those of us who grasp it, it has tremendous meaning. This idea that from this cross flows all grace and power is really astounding. And so we hear that. We hear this theme run through all of the scriptures this morning. We hear about how God uses, um, uses weakness, how in places where we least expect it, something happened. God does something. God uses all of that. We hear in this, uh, in this first reading, um, Zebulon and Naphtali were in the north, northern regions. And uh, in, in 800, when this was written, they had been the first area that had been um, conquered by the Assyrians. And so, so they, and we hear it, uh, Zebulon and Naphtali of the Gentiles. It was thought about the people, they were a little bit suspect to the people in, uh, in southern Israel, right? Because it was, they thought to be less Jewish than everybody else. And so, so we hear how God will, will raise them up. And they said, from you, territories of Zebulon and Naphtali will come a light to the nations, right? And so what we hear in the gospel then is that Jesus, and Matthew uses the Bible name for him, he uses Capernaum. And Capernaum would have been known by his hearers to be in the territory of Zebulon and Naphtali. And so Matthew, who would have been very familiar with the Hebrew scriptures, um, his gospel was written for, uh, for, uh, for Jewish Christians, he would have known that. And so he uses this. He uses this to, to explain to his hearers that, lo and behold, Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophet uh, Isaiah, that the light to the nations has come. And here it is in the person of Jesus Christ. And Paul knows... He know, Paul knows, uh, as does Matthew, the meaning of this, because think about this. In all of biblical history, the theme about God uh, surprising us in unbelievable ways, uh, Abraham and Sarah, Sarah who was thought to be barren, and all of a sudden she bears uh, a son, right? And the, and the nation of Israel begins, right? And so we have Isaac and Jacob. We think about David and Goliath, right? In the weakness of David, in the small stature of David, he defeats Goliath. We think about uh, being lost uh, in the desert for 40 years, and Moses, who doesn't even, who tries to throw his brother Aaron under the bus, right, because he doesn't want to do it, right? And God uses this, uh, uses Moses, right, to bring the people of Israel uh, uh, out, of, uh, out of oppression to liberation. So Paul would have known this. Paul would have known, as would Matthew have known this, that God surprises us in unbelievable ways. When we least expect it, something changes, something happens. I've said this to you before, I love the language of Isaiah. In there we hear how God brings flowers forth in the desert and water where we least expect it, right? God does that in our lives. He works miracles in our lives all the time when we least expect it. So this theme that we hear about God bringing forth from this place that was, uh, was probably least respected of all the territories in Israel, from that place comes a light to the nations. Last week we heard that we talked a little bit about Lumen Gentium, about how this is the light to all of the people, not just some of the people, but all of the people. And we hear that again. We hear that again in this in the scripture. And so, so you can imagine Jesus who is beginning his public ministry. The first part of the scripture, we hear how Jesus uh, comes to know that John has been uh, 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 taken prisoner by Herod, and that is no doubt going to die if not already been executed. Right? And so Jesus is beginning his public ministry. Can you imagine what his mindset must have been? Can you imagine what he must have been thinking? That, that I'm beginning this ministry and everything's falling apart already. Oh my God, what's going on here, right? And, and, and nonetheless, uh, nonetheless, Jesus, his reputation is building. There are some biblical scholars who think that Jesus probably picked up some of the ministry from John and was baptizing as well. But as Jesus grew in his understanding of who he was, so did his effects on the community. He began healing people. He began forgiving people, right? Which would have been an anathema in that community. So we hear Jesus beginning his public ministry. And we hear Jesus, uh, Jesus is aware that his cousin probably um, has, uh, has been executed by her. And from, from this moment of maybe when he thinks everything's falling apart before he already begins, look what happens, right? This eternal love changes the entire world, right? And so Jesus, as you and I, grew in his understanding and his wisdom about who he was called to be in the world. And so what does Jesus do then? He doesn't go to the synagogue. He doesn't go to the major centers of learning. He doesn't go to, uh, he doesn't go to where the Pharisees and the Sadducees are gathering. No, he goes to the, to the lakeside of Galilee. He goes to the lakeside of, uh, of the area of Nepal and Zebulon. 
and he calls people to follow him. Right? He goes and he calls Andrew and James and John and Peter and Philip. And it's amazing. He doesn't pick scholars. He doesn't pick the senators. He doesn't pick the people of power. What he does is he goes and he calls <coughs> those who in that society would probably be thought the least scholar, right? And he goes and he says to them, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of people. Come and follow me. Their response is immediate, right? They leave their nets and they go. Sometimes the uh, allegory of the net is seen as we, uh, the worldly entanglements that we have. And that when God calls us, if we leave those aside and we follow where he calls, then we, we achieve some victory, some, some, sense of, uh, some sense of satisfaction in our lives. It's about following the will of God for us. But we hear how Jesus, who, like Matthew and like Paul and like Isaiah, knew that God often chooses the weakest that God often chooses those who we expect very little from to bring forth uh, uh, tremendous changes in this world, right? All of all of all of us know that. Even if we look at the great mystics, even if we look at uh, even if we look at, uh, at at evidence in the Scripture, it is not the proud and the mighty that God chooses. It's not the kings and queens and the rulers that God chooses. It are those who seem powerless. It is those who seem um, the most willing to surrender all they have and to be used by God, right? And to kind of maybe get out of their own way so that God can use them as a channel. It is really a tremendous message. And we hear this all the way through the readings today. And we hear all of these people who had that kind of intimate knowledge of, of God, right? Because because they, 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 like you and I, they spend, they spend time in relationship with God. They spend time in some understanding of who God is for them in their life. And so that you and I have had this experience as well. You and I, when we think that, uh, that, that our last uh, shred of patience is gone, that our last shred of energy is gone, right? That we cannot do another thing. Or we're in the midst of some great despair and we think that nothing is ever going to change, right? And all of a sudden the doorbell rings or you get a phone call and somebody makes you smile, right? Nothing's changed about the circumstances, right? Other than you. And other than something in that moment, out of when you least expected, God used something to move you and, and change you in a certain way. I was thinking about this, I was thinking about this in two respects. That, that this idea, that, that, that the question for us today might be, what are the Neftali and Zebulons in our life? What is those areas that are oppressing us? What are those areas that are weighing us down, right? How do we want to maybe uh, move into that and see that in those moments there might be some grace for us that God has for us? What is the, what is the miracle that maybe is sitting right next to us or right in front of us? Maybe what is the next thing that we have to do, but that we don't want to do that because something's getting in our way, pride or the inability to forgive. What is that, that if we just did it, then this, uh, this experience of, uh, of this oppression would be lifted from us? What is God calling us to do? So that's one of the, the, the themes, I think, for us to explore uh, in our lives today. The other is, is how is God calling us the way that he called Paul and Matthew? The way that he called Simon and, and the sons of thunder, John and, uh, and, uh, and Andrew. How is God calling us to proclaim to the world this message, this message of the cross? We call this the criterion of embarrassment. What people would want to have a God who so ignominiously died on Calvary? But it is in this weakness, it is in this complete emptying out of Christ of himself on the cross, this self-donation of God to us, that, that we are saved and that our salvation comes and that our happiness and our joy rests in. What an understanding that would be. I, we've, I've shared this with you before. In the, if we were to wear this around our neck in the first century, the way that we wear it now, uh, it, we, it, it's a little like wearing a, uh, an electric chair around your neck. This would have been an awful sign for people. This was, this was a horrible way to die, right? This was a horrible way to die. But Paul reminds us that what we see in this is not what the rest of the world sees in this. What we see in this is our victory. What we see in this is our example of what it means to surrender completely uh, to this God who loves us. And then to allow this God to love us, to use us as his instruments in this world. It is a tremendous message we have today. I think about this um, when I am uh, when I'm in different places. And, and this morning, I am with uh, individuals who have long-term and serious persistent mental illness. And, uh, and I celebrate uh, uh, the Eucharist for them every Sunday. I've been doing that probably for the last seven years. And in the midst of that experience, in the midst of us talking about the scriptures, 
where you least expect it comes these wonderful insights about this loving God, about this God who sometimes has the potential just for a moment to free me from my own anxieties, just for a moment to free me from my worst fears, which might be my own hallucinations or my own inability to trust the people in the world that I love the most. What an astounding God that is. And then to hear people talk about that, to have people, 35, 40 of us, gather in a room where they can share that experience of, of God's love, of using them in their weakness, right? To say to the person sitting next to them, it's going to be okay. This won't always be like this, right? This too shall pass. What an astounding message that must be. Other times, uh, tonight uh, we'll be down at the, uh, at the jail. I'll celebrate the Mass there. And in the midst of that oppressive place, there is tremendous hope. There is unbelievable hope. Again, that it won't always be like this, right? And that no matter what we have done, that God is here, that no longer defines us. Something greater than this defines us. And so in the weakness of this act, something great can be drawn from that. I don't always have to do this. I can do something different. That's the message that I think we have today. That from, from the places where we least expect it, right? Uh, uh, God uses, uh, uses that to, to speak to us about building us up as a people of God. I think about this for myself, right? I think about this in my own life. Probably the person I'm the most angry at has the best thing to say to me, and I'm so annoyed when that happens, right? Because I have to listen. I have to step outside of that. I have to, for a moment, uh, put all of that aside and listen with different ears, right? That's always the invitation for you and I. That is always the invitation to love more deeply, to enter more into this experience, or more into this invitation of how God calls you and I, each with our own gifts, and our own uniqueness to proclaim this message that these apostles were called to proclaim, that Paul was called to proclaim, that Matthew was called to proclaim. It is the same message. It is it's not, it's not mine, it's not Stephanie's or Megan's or John's or, or Eddie's. It is Jesus Christ that we come to proclaim, right? Not 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 and that's what Paul was writing to the church of Corinth. That's who we proclaim. This is this is this this, this, this is the Lamb of God who comes to take all our sins away. So let us continue in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. and profess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. The God is not made, but is the King of power. Through God, all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, who was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the house of Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and he opened up to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of us. We trust in Jesus the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people of faith, let us raise our voices in our prayers and petitions, believing that this God will hear us. The response is. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian unity, that Christ not that Christ not be divided, but that all uh, all the baptized will be in, in, of one mind and spirit. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the people who walk in the darkness of war in Syria, South Sudan, Iraq, and the efforts of diplomats, that the efforts of diplomats will create a light of peace. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop George, that his words and actions in interfaith dialogue help heal divisions and unite believers. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from the cold, that 
as government assist efforts to feed and house those who suffer from the extreme weather. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have heard the Lord calling but have not yet responded, that they fall where he leads. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the voiceless in our society, that believers defend and speak for the unborn, the poor, the immigrant, the elderly. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. No. For the sick and those who care for them. And are there any among us we should especially we should especially be mindful of? Morning. Yeah. Lorna, who was uh, just diagnosed with mono. Mark Kelly. Michael. Bob Williams. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who now walk the streets of the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, especially Louis Dan, and Tony, Chief Officer Edward Bali, Specialist Andrew H. Sippel, Chief Warrant Officer Andrew L. McAdams, Sergeant Drew M. Scobie, Sergeant Daniel T. Lee, Sergeant Jacob M. Hess, who were killed in Afghanistan. And are there any who we should be especially mindful of? We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Would you join me in our prayers of thanksgiving for the uh, newest American National Catholic Church Parish in Lewisburg, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, American National Catholic Parish, that God might uh, bless them with many graces and much growth. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join me in praying for our seminarians, for Bill and for Steve and for John, and that God might send uh, more uh, individuals uh, to respond to the call to follow him more closely uh, as a priest or religious. For this, let us pray for the parish community of St. Francis of Assisi and for the wonderful witness that they give to God that from, uh, from the weakness grows uh, to or uh, the presence has resonated and rippled through this community in ways that I think God will never understand. And so we give thanks to God for your presence here. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayer. And for the communities that this parish serve at Essex County Hospital and Essex County Jail, and for the Arden Court uh, Alzheimer's Care Unit, that God might continue to uh, uh, to strengthen and, uh, and bless those individuals. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayer. Most high, glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud, and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them as they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ, your Son. Amen. 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 As our gifts are gathered and prepared, let us all join with one another and sing number 580. Lord, you have come. That's number 580. <laughs>
the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ will come again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Calling to mind, Lord God, the, son, the death your Son endured for our salvation, His glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and eagerly awaiting the day of his return, we all feel in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and see the victim by whose sacrifice you were pleased to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. Let him make us an everlasting gift to you, that we may share in the inheritance of your saints, with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles and the Martyrs, St. Paul, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice, which has made our peace with you, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servants, the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, I, your unworthy servant, all bishops, priests, and deacons, all ministers of your church, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Merciful Father, hear the prayers of the family who have gathered here before you, and unite to yourself all your children, now scattered over the face of the earth. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy with them your everlasting glory through Christ our Lord, in whom you give the world everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace.
the Lamb of God. <laughs> this is Jesus who invites each and every one of us into the experience of God's love for us. And happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I'll only say the word and I shall be you. At St. Francis of Assisi American National Catholic Church, everyone is invited to come to the table of the Lord to receive the body and blood of Christ.
So our brunch is immediately after. Uh, after uh, uh, everybody, I, I usually have everybody stand, but then I get yelled at. So, so, uh, so sit for a moment. So, uh, Corinne, Corinne and Daniel, the first time here, they were uh, appropriately standing as they should. But uh, 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 our brunch is right after. I think we have a guest who's going to speak to us about some things. Oh no, never mind. That's not true. So, uh, uh, so we're going to have brunch afterwards. Who's here for the first time? Tell us who you are. Um, I'm Corinne. I'm Dan. Getting married. Getting married? That's really good. Talk to them, those of you who are married, right? Let them know. Yeah. Gail, where are you from, Gail? Oh. Arden Court. Arden Court, very nice, very nice. Other first time? Anybody else? Oh. Oh, I see Sal's here, right? Sal's so. mm -hmm. here. Say hi, Sal. There he is. There he is. We baptized Sal. When was Sal? Hi, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, please join us for brunch. Please join us for brunch. Remember Wednesday evenings we get together here for the uh, uh, Gospel of Matthew. So join us if you can, if you can. Um, and we get closer to that, we'll be doing some taze and some different meditative ways of entering into the experience. Uh, the music sounded great. Thank you guys. Right? That was a nice. little, little hard. Okay. Uh, just so you know, I was listening to a report. I snore. I don't know if uh, I'll just own that, right? Um, and so what I read was is a, uh, a physician, her husband snored so badly that she started uh, doing exercises requiring him to sing. And so it strengthens certain vocal cords, and now he snores less. So if you sing, right, sing really loud, well, <laughs> chances are you may decrease your snoring, right? So, uh, 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 so, uh, so let us pray. <laughs> Grant, all-powerful God, that we who receive in this Eucharist your life-giving grace may always delight in your blessings. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all go forth, joining together and singing number 657. We are the light of the world. That's number 657. Upstairs. We have a little room upstairs, so brunch is upstairs, so come on.